Let's go ahead and add a 1200 to our system. I'm going to add a 1215 under controllers, S7 1200, CPU 1215. So you can see there is different versions. This is version 3 PLC and the part number is different, AG31, and then version 4 is 40. Uh, quick note, here is different version. So depending on what firmware is on your actual hardware, make sure it matches right here. So I'm going to select the latest version 4.3, click OK. So this is going to add the 1200 to my project. And what I want to show you today is just some basic settings on the PLC properties that are right down here that are quickly and easily set up and that can help us throughout our project. So here is our PLC that we added to our system. And as you can see, it opens up the network view and then the device view. So if I go to network view, I can see all my devices here. And once you add a device, it automatically goes to the device view. Uh, also, uh, the software is like cursor sensitive. So if you click on PLC and look at the properties, it's going to show you all the properties of the PLC. If I click on this green box for the Ethernet, it's going to take me to my Profinet interface. So you can quickly go to different options. If I look here for the signal board, if there is a signal board. So let's go ahead and first thing we want to do is set up our IP address. So I'm going to make sure, let's say, change it from default to 10.10. .10. And then if you have a router or a gateway in the middle, make sure you enable this. For most VPN accesses, you have to make sure that this is enabled. And then you put up your router address right there. Here is where the Profinet name comes into place. I can uncheck this box. This generates it automatically. So if our PLC name is PLC underscore one, let me check it back. And I'm gonna change it to, let's say 1200 PLC. And when I compile it, it's gonna change the name automatically to something from this actual PLC name. So let's go ahead and compile. There's nothing in our project, so it should be quick. And if I go back, look at my properties right there. And the, but the converted name is this. So I can uncheck this and just call it PLC1. And that's the name it's going to get. Okay, let's look at time synchronization. If you have an NTP server and you want this to be slave, operating mode. If you have I devices, you can set up IO devices right here. Some advanced options. I'm going to skip those for now. And web server. I'm going to say yes, enable web server. Now let's go ahead and look at the actual properties of the PLC. And I'll go step by step. Here is your general, all the product, project information, catalog number, installation date, and you can just put different stuff there. Profinet, we already went through it, all the IP addresses, time synchronization. Here's all your digital I.O. So here is your digital inputs. And what's the input filter time? So I'm going to keep it default. Uh, the digital outputs and the IO addresses. So instead of zero and one, if you want it to start from something else, you can put any value here. Same thing for your analog inputs. Here is our analog inputs. Uh, we want to make sure we set up the integration time. If you want faster, select 60 Hertz. And then here is the smoothing for all the noise. So make sure you have to go through each channel and then select different options for each channel. Same thing for analog output. Uh, what is the substitute value? We're going to call just keep it zero so that if there is an error, it substitutes zero. Uh, if you have any high speed counters, then here is where you will select the high speed counters and PTO pulse generators. Startup. This is important. One thing I always change here is form restart run. So if something happens after startup on power on, by default, it will be power off or stop. You want to make sure you select it to run so that the CPU goes into run mode. Uh, here is cycle monitoring time and the communication load. Uh, and then this is another important settings for system memory so that we generate our M1 bit and then M0 so that we don't overwrite it. So now I just created all these bits for different clock at different frequencies and then always true, always fault, first scan and diagnostics. Let's go to the web server. I'm going to activate the web server. And another checkbox by default is access by only HTTPS for security. Here is where you would create a login. So let's just say I'm going to create a new login and just say user one. And what kind of access do we want? We want it user to do everything from here. 
so we can do that check all the boxes and make sure we create a password i'm just going to call it user one now so we created a user one login if there is multi-language support another important is time of day so make sure you select the actual local time so let's say we are in pacific time zone so i'm going to select right here los angeles and then i'll activate daylight savings so if you have a hmi that is slave to the plc and you set up the plc time to the correct time zone to then download from the computer to the plc then the hmi will get the same time zone value but it will be utc time so it will be zero zero and then you just offset the time zone in the hmi to display the correct time uh, protection full access i recommend selecting hmi access but then make sure you create a password for it let's just say i'm going to create one two three four five one two three four five so when i add an hmi i will make sure i put the same password on the hmi access on the drivers configuration control allow to reconfigure the devices or oh, one more thing i want to show up here on uh, access protection is this one so here is a option for get put commands for certain SCADA systems and other different hmi if this is not enabled sometimes this uh, plc doesn't talk to your system so that's one of the questions that we get asked a lot uh, configuration control, uh, connection overview, here is everything that shows your communication, what's possible, what's the IO, what's configured, and what's empty. And then here is overview of addresses. So it starts at 0 and 1 for digital input, 64 and 67 for our the analog, and then high-speed counters and pulse. Let's go ahead and save the project let's go ahead and just create a simple logic in our system just create some more values and some tags so let's see here i can just say okay when my input 0.0, .0 turns on i want to create the light to go on so it's the first light 0.0, .0. and then we can also do if you bring this bomb block it's an empty block and i would just say move command move i can just say clock byte so i know it's a memory byte zero or i can just type clock and it shows up so clock byte i want clock byte to go to qb1 and it automatically creates the name if i want to rename it i'll just say rename the tag and i can say output byte one and let's go look at the plc tags so here is all the tags what's nice is everything here is just like excel so let's say i call it input underscore one right let's go ahead and add a few lines and if i just drag this it will automatically create all these different inputs matching all the inputs here i can do the same thing here let's just create a few and i'm going to call it output one and it will add so here is my first eight channel input and each channel output and here is my output byte one let's go ahead and look at the memory resources we are using so if i right click here and look at assignment list here is all my resources so this is the memory i have which is four megabyte i'm going to compile the project and i'm pretty much using zero percent i got digital inputs i'm using six percent digital output 56 percent and so forth and here is my ob1 that's using 36 bytes 36,000 bytes uh, so make sure we save the project uh, and then project under project memory uh, we have options for archive so what this does is archives the project and creates a .zip file so it's like a zip file so make sure once you're done to back up your project always do an archive and once you archive it there's an option to retrieve so you can do open an archive project to open an archive project you have to go under here and select retrieve for the project. 
So it's just a basic overview of what to set up for a 1200 PLC, all the settings, and then archive and retrieve. And if you want to go online with the PLC, there is an option for online and diagnostics. Once you have the PLC, you can go online and look at all the diagnostic buffer from the PLC. Make sure you select PNIE, which is Profinet Ethernet. All you need is a standard Ethernet cable. And then what kind of port you have on your laptop or a PC, which is just a standard communication network card. And then click Go Online. Make sure your PLC subnet is the same subnet as your laptop. So your laptop IP address has to be something within this range. Click Go Online and you will see all the online diagnostic of the PLC. Thank you.